Welcome to Tabletop Ready. In this video I'm going to show you how you can start painting your Cruel Boys. I'm going to show you step by step how you can achieve a style very similar to the Cruel Boys painted by the Heavy Metal team. And you'll not only be able to paint the Gut Rippers, you can use what I show you in this video to paint some of the other units you'll find in the army as well. I'll list what paints and hobby supplies I use in the description and if you go and follow me on Instagram I'll be putting some of the colour recipes I use there for you to use anytime you need them. If you enjoy my content let me know by liking the video and by letting me know in the comments below. It really goes a long way to growing the channel. Whenever I get ready to paint something I like to mount the miniatures on something that I can hold on to and I might also keep some of the parts separate to make it easier to paint. So now I've done that, I can get them undercoated and painted. I chose to undercoat the miniatures using Death Guard Green Spray. It's a great earthy mid-tone to work with and it's really going to help when it comes to painting the skin. And I always like to get a lot of colours down first when I'm painting. I don't have to worry about being messy and I can take my time choosing what colours I want to use, where they're going to go and it helps motivate me to finish the models because the colours are already there. I just have to shade and highlight them. I'm going to start by painting all the cloth and straps and to make them look more interesting I'm going to be using some different browns. And whenever I'm painting I always like to thin my paints first with an equal amount of water and always keep my brush moving and I try not to go over any areas I've already painted. I also like to paint multiple layers. This prevents me losing any detail on the miniature, so once you've finished with a layer, let that dry and repeat the process until you've got a nice solid colour. Even though I'm using these colours, remember you can always choose whatever colours you want to use. I just want to show you the process of how I go about painting these miniatures. Have some fun and try and make each miniature different and stick to about 5 colours and use them across all the models. So even though they'll be individually different, they'll all still look like they belong together. After I've done all of that, I like to then paint other details like weapons, accessories and teeth. Still just working with non-metallic colours first. I also get a base colour on the shields and plates on the bolt boys now so I don't have to worry about painting around any metals later and just lets me feel like I've already started to paint them. Once I'm happy with how all those colours look, I move on to painting all the metallics on the miniatures. I use iron hand steel for any silver details, Retribute Rama for the gold details, and Balthazar gold for the teeth and eyes on the shields. Now that I've got all my main colours painted, the next step is going to be a wash to create some definition. But before I do that, I like to check all the miniatures to make sure I haven't missed anything and also take the time to neaten up anywhere I may have been a bit too messy when painting. I'm now ready to give the miniatures a wash and for the wash I'm making a mix of equal parts Agrax Surf Shade and Norn Oil and then I use an equal amount of Lamy Medium to the wash I've used. This is going to weaken the strength of the wash so it doesn't do all the colours I've already painted. I'm using the wash over the entire miniature. You want enough wash to cover the miniature evenly without it pulling up in any of the details and then let it dry. So I came across a problem. You'll notice that this miniature is pretty shiny. This does happen sometimes, especially if you've mixed washes or not shaken them properly, but it's nothing to panic about. If you do get this problem, then all you need to do is just use some Lamy Medium and this will get rid of that glossy finish. I'm now going to show you how you can paint the auric skin three different ways and you can choose to paint them all the same or have a mix of three like I'm going to. To get started I've reapplied a base colour of Death Guard Green to the areas that I'm going to be painting and after I finish doing that I choose three different greens. Auric Flesh, Elysium Green and Ogryn Camo. I use these colours to layer up over the Death Guard Green making sure to leave some of the base colour still showing on the shallower detail. I then mixed up three different washes with Lamy Medium that I think would work really well with the greens I chose and applied these all over the skin areas I painted. After that's dry you want to layer up with the colour you chose for that skin tone. Then finish the skin with a highlight of Creed Khaki on all three. To add more interest, I created a glaze using Cadian Flesh Tone by thinning it down with some water. 
Use the glaze on the nose, knees and elbows, remembering to treat this like painting rather than like a wash. I then used the Stegodon Scale Green Glaze on the lower lips to finish. You could if you wanted to experiment by using the different washes with the different greens, like I did with the Kill Boss to get even more variety. It's time for the fun stuff starting with highlighting all the cloth, straps and wood. And to make this easier I'm just using Carrick Stone to highlight all these details. When it comes to highlighting I don't tend to thin down the paint as much as I normally would and I also like to remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper to give me more control and to prevent those thick blobby lines. Take your time going around the miniature, it will be worth it and if you make mistakes it's okay to go back and clean up your lines. If you want to impress people you can easily do this by painting some scratches and marks on all the cloth details. Before I show you how to paint the shields, let me show you how to paint any tassels you may have on your miniature. Start with either Lothurn Blue or Mephiston Red depending on what colour you want the tassel. Then apply a wash of Norn Oil as it is. Highlight the Lothurn Blue with Blue Horror and the Mephiston Red with Wild Rider Red. It's finally time to paint the shields, the part you've all probably been looking forward to. I start by reapplying Mephiston Red but I actually only do one thin layer because I still want some of the mixed tones to come through. The next layer I apply with Mephiston Red is just going to be on the raised areas of the shield. I then use Evil Sun Scarlet to continue to layer up. This is going to create that bright red we're after. And I finish the shield first with a highlight of Troll Slayer Orange, following the detail that's already there. And finally using Fire Dragon Bright, I paint little dots emphasising that highlight. Start by mixing an equal amount of Reichland Flesh Shade and Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss and I use this to wash the gold details. I then highlight the gold details with Liberated Gold and the silver details with Stormhouse Silver. And finally to finish off your Grill Boys use some thinned down Lothurn Blue and thinned down Scrag Brown to create some interest around your miniatures. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, this is just the first part of a series of videos and in the next video I'll be showing you how you can paint your hobgoblins so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Make sure to like the video and let me know what you think in the comments below, the engagement really helps to grow the channel. Thanks again for joining me on this journey and I'll see you in the next video.